Hey everyone, it's Casey here, and today we're going to discuss something that hits very close to home for me because I was misdiagnosed um, many years ago with what we thought was Lyme's disease, and it actually took over five years for the doctors to determine what was actually wrong with me. Um, so I titled this, Could I Be Getting Sick From Mold? Because that was precisely what had made me sick. Um, the thing that was difficult is my symptoms at, at the height of my symptoms, I had 37 symptoms, um, everything from respiratory issues to hair falling out to skin problems, uh, vision problems, super bad memory, memory issues, um, night sweats, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to read you the list just so you can kind of know. These are the most common symptoms that people have when they have been exposed to mold. So the number one is the brain fog and memory loss issues. Um, second to that is fatigue, like constant fatigue and weakness within your body. No matter how much rest you get, you just never feel rested. Um, again, like I said, the, the upper respiratory issues. So runny nose, post-nasal drip, um, scratchy throat, um, irritation with your eyes, constantly sneezing or coughing. Um, the other one that was a big one for me was persistent headaches. Like in a normal month of 30 days, I was getting close to 20 headaches. So it was just, it was crippling my life. I wasn't able to do very much. Um, and it just, it had a massive effect on me and my family. Um, also joint pain and nerve pain, uh, muscle cramping, severe sensitivity to light, vertigo, tremors, and, um, a numbness and tingling in your extremities. So like I said, I actually had on this list, I had every single thing that was on the list for mold. But the reason why doctors didn't look at that is because it's not a common thing that doctors are thinking about. And unless you have a doctor that's a naturopath and kind of thinks outside of the box, you're probably not going to have this as even a possibility. So um, originally they said, you know, let's do some blood tests and let's do some, you know, urine tests and whatnot and we'll figure out what's going on. Well, everything came back and they couldn't see anything wrong. And I'm going, I definitely have something wrong. But I literally went through five years of going to various doctors who told me I was a hypochondriac, that the things I was experiencing were all in my head. And it's really disturbing when you are dealing with a health crisis and people don't believe you. So if you're in these shoes right now and you've not been diagnosed with something or you've been diagnosed and, and the treatment is not working, it's time to come back to the board and go, maybe we need to look a little deeper or a little differently. Um, I was originally, they originally thought that I might have um, rheumatoid arthritis, which is crazy for somebody my age. Um, they also thought that I might have um, lupus. Uh, they also thought that I had MS. So we went through all these different tests and consistently came back with no answer. Um, so I was given the clinical diagnosis of Lyme's disease because when they tested me out of the Lyme's disease symptoms, I had all but maybe four. The only thing I didn't have present was the bullseye rash but I'd had all these other symptoms. So they really thought, okay, well, this must be Lyme disease. So they went ahead and treated me. And so I was on antibiotics for almost an entire year. And you can imagine what that did to my gut flora. It absolutely destroyed it. I had such a sensitivity to foods that I became allergic to darn near everything. And it really just made life miserable. Um, so at the end of that all, I just, uh, that was when I jumped into veganism because I thought, well, gosh, I'm literally willing to try anything at this point to get healthy. Um, I don't really even care what you tell me to eat. If it's going to maybe make me better, sure, I'll give it a go. Um, so we went through this and in with me being so careful about what I was eating and really paying attention to getting good exercise and plenty of fluid and as much rest as I could, still, I was not gaining ground on this sickness and it felt like I mean, I literally remember at one point my husband had scheduled a trip for us to go to Hawaii and I had never been to Hawaii and you'd think that anybody would be thrilled to go to Hawaii. And yet I was so sick that I remember crying. It was about two weeks prior and I said, I, I don't want to go. The idea of going on a wonderful vacation when I'm feeling this sick, it just kind of takes all the fun out of it. And I don't, I don't think I want to do it. And, um, so I, I've, I've been into a very dark place with my health. And that was the second time because my first time was when I was 21 and I had cancer. So 
I have went through some tough stuff in my health. And so I can really relate. If you're going through something, I'm sorry. And I really hope that you can find um, some answers. So it wasn't until I finally said, okay, the doctors aren't believing me. Enough is enough. I got to go totally out there with this. And I looked for a naturopath that was willing to do some new tests and try something else out. And so I met a guy and um, we went through extensive testing. And the thing that was so wonderful is my first appointment with him, he's probably spent two and a half hours with me. And I remember him looking at me in the eye and he said, Casey, I'm going to find out what's wrong with you and we're going to get you better. And I just started crying because I was so hopeless at that point. And it was just really hard to even imagine a day without such debilitating joint pain that I hardly could get out of bed and walk. Um, so anyhow, we went through all the testing and it took about a month for us to get all of the results back. But he called me and he said, Casey, I think we found what you have. And I was so excited. So we went to the office and he sits me down and he goes, I think you have mold poisoning. <laughs> and to be honest, I kind of rolled my eyes and I thought, oh my gosh, we just spent so much money and now I don't have the answer I need. And oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Because the reason why I thought it was so ridiculous is literally six years prior, we had fully remodeled our home, like top to bottom, inside out. So there was, I had never in my life seen mold and we have a very clean updated home. So I'm thinking this is not possible. You are out to lunch. I did not have mold poisoning. And I told him all this and he said, listen, I, I understand why you'd feel that way. He said, but I really think, um, he goes, what we did find is he goes in your lungs, you have a very deep staph infection that is just plagued your lungs completely full, which is why you constantly have the post nasal drip and all these things. He said, but I really think that the driver of that is exposure to, to mold. And he goes, so if it's not in your home, Casey, it may be your place of work. And he goes, but I first want you to look at home because that's the most common thing. So of course we come home and we literally start tearing apart the showers and looking behind the tile to see if there's mold and nothing. Um, went all over the place, couldn't find anything. The last place we chose to look was underneath our home in the ducting system for the air vents. And sure enough, John saw something that was really disturbing. He said, even with his mask on, looking and smelling through it, he said, he goes, I just knew immediately that's bad. That is really not okay. So whatever that is, that's toxic and we got to get it out of here. So once we found that, um, we had also done what's called an ERMI test kit. So they have you, they have you order this test from a company called Mycometrics. It's on the East coast and they send you this like little kit and they tell you exactly how to swab your house and what to do. And then you send it in. And sure enough, not only they were looking for one of five of the toxic molds, because there's molds everywhere and not all molds are toxic for us, but there are five toxic molds. When we got that test result back, it actually confirmed that we didn't have just one, but all five of the toxic molds in that venting system. And that specific tear where the, where the mold was really heavily at was in the vent that went straight up into my bedroom. And so um, it really was like an eye opener. But then my next question was, okay, I live in this house, but so do my, my children and my husband. How are they not sick? And he said, you know, the thing is 22% of people, only 22% of people are very, very susceptible to molds. The other percentage, they can live with it and it is taxing on their immune system, but their immune system is strong enough to fight it. And he said, I honestly think what's happened, Casey, is you've, your previous cancer patient who went through chemotherapy, which destroyed your immune system. Then you went through what they thought was Lyme's disease and they destroyed your gut flora. And now your body is just suffering and it still has this sickness and it's just very susceptible. And so that made sense. Um, the one thing that we did figure out though, is my son was getting chronic, um, bloody noses. And he was also having constant sneezing. Like it was just something he did all the time. And it wasn't until all the ducting was completely torn out of our house and redone that we came back to the house. And I remember walking in the door and breathing a deep breath in. And I, I was like, it's gone. And it's weird how something that I didn't even know was there before it, I could tell there was a massive difference when I came back. And the crazy thing was my son could too. He goes, it smells so good in our house now. It just, it just, I want to breathe so deep. It smells really good. From that point on his, what we thought were seasonal allergies and all these respiratory issues and sneezing and bloody, all this completely went away. He's literally not had any of that 
since this got fixed. So I really wanted to zone in on this because I feel like there might be one or more of you out there that are dealing with this issue. And, and if that's the case, I want you to get some answers. So the great thing is, um, all you need to do is look over your symptoms. So, so there's a place online that's called survivingmold.com. So check it out. There is like a little quiz that you can do on it, which is called the VCS screening test. And that will actually give you a clue if you might be a candidate and you and you might have this mold poisoning. When I took that test, I, I was like 100%. They're like, you've been exposed to black mold. And I'm going, wow, this is crazy. Um, so once you figure out that your symptoms line up with mold symptoms and you do the online v, v, uh, VCS test, then I suggest ordering the Ermi kit because the thing is a doctor is still going to want to see a con confirmation of the mold in your home or your workplace or wherever you think you've been exposed to it at. So once you get that homework done, you can take that information to your doctor and they can get you treated. So I ended up having to go through six months of a nasal antibiotic that was like snorted up my nose and really uncomfortable, but it was able to eradicate all of the um, staph that was in my lungs. But alongside that, I, I worked with you know, eating a very clean diet. And now that I know what I know about fasting, I highly recommend that if you find yourself in this place, you want to couple it with fasting because fasting gives you the most amount of energy for repair and restoration in the body. So I'm sure you guys maybe have other questions. So if you do, please put them in the comments or feel free to send me a message on Facebook Messenger, Casey Relaine. And I would be really happy to answer them because I want you to get well and I want you to know that there is hope. So um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep doing some videos for you guys and keeping you up to date on health topics such as this. Have an awesome night.